Right now at 6, Airbnb makes history in Wisconsin this past year. How the service is impacting the state's hotel industry. A family asking for the community's help after their home is destroyed in a fire the day after Christmas. And Madison's newest and biggest fire station is now open. How it will serve residents in the event of an emergency. This is News 3 at 6. Thanks for joining us. It has been a pretty big year for Airbnb in Wisconsin. The company says hosts earn more than $40 million throughout the state this year in places like Madison, Milwaukee, and Janesville. Adam Duxter joins us from our bureau at the Janesville Gazette with how traditional hotels are trying to keep up. Adam? Well, Eric, this year, thousands of people have visited Airbnbs in Rock County alone, and city leaders around here seem to think that's a good thing, and traditional hotels say it's even benefiting them. Carl Anderson has been in the hotel industry for years. When I started, you plugged in a hair dryer and a, and a set of curlers. And over the years, he's seen things change firsthand. And now when a family checks in, everybody has their own device and possibly two. So it's, you have to increase power, you have to increase Wi-Fi. You know, we're going to free breakfasts now that weren't offered in the past. He says the changes are largely because of new competition. Expedia's Travelocity, TripAdvisor, and also Airbnb. Airbnb says this year they made Wisconsin hosts more than $40 million, a record. The city of Janesville says they're trying to keep up with the demand. We really see consumers demanding experiences like an Airbnb. They want something more intimate. They want something more unique. So we want to be able to answer that consumer demand and really grow to match what people want. But Anderson says the growth of Airbnb actually helps his business out as well. And says he thinks his hotel will always have the upper hand in at least one area. In our end, it's always going to be service. When you're with Airbnb and your toilet breaks, who's going to respond? Um, you know, and how long will it take them to respond? So at least at a full service property or a mid scale property, all those amenities will be looked after immediately to make sure everything is, is going, you know, the way you expect it to go. And a little bit more on that data we learned from Airbnb today. Roughly 5,000 people list their properties in Wisconsin, and out of them, they all made roughly $5,000 a piece listing their properties this year. And the consensus is, as things continue to grow here in Janesville, the demand for those Airbnbs will only get higher. All right, Adam Duxter in Rock County. Now, Adam, thank you. Governor-elect Tony Evers has appointed Carolyn Stanford Taylor to be the next state superintendent of public schools. She's currently one of his top deputies and will take on her new position after Evers takes his oath of office as governor January 7th. Most Wisconsin bankers are hesitant about hemp. A poll from the Wisconsin Bankers Association shows 83% of its members say they will not actively help provide loans to hemp growers or processors. Most bankers say not enough is known about the hemp crop or the revenue that would come from farming it. A hemp grower tells News 3 banks are willing to give him loans for equipment and building structures, but not for the crop itself. I hope that banks will realize the value of this crop and make it available for others to start farming it and give farmers the opportunity to increase their, their income for their families and save their farms in some instances. The Bankers Association encouraging farmers to provide as much information as possible if they do eventually decide to apply for a loan. They should know their revenue expectations, revenue stream, and whether they have anything they could put up for collateral. Let's check in now with Chief Meteorologist Gary Canalti on a very rainy afternoon really all day Gary you still got the umbrella out there no actually I was able to uh, bring it in for a little bit uh, the rain is at least temporarily stopped we're seeing off and on showers now instead of the steadier rain like we saw earlier but uh, heavier snow is on the ground across much of the northwestern half of Minnesota through the Dakotas that area under winter storm warnings and blizzard warnings uh, winter weather advisors in effect for far uh, far northwestern Wisconsin for a couple of inches of new snow you can see that's where the snow has been falling pretty steadily all day uh, across much of Wisconsin though the precipitation has changed into the form of rain but you can see a little bit of break here in southern Wisconsin uh, with the showers becoming a little more widely scattered low temperatures this morning after midnight started out very mild here in Madison we were at 37 degrees when the day started uh, temperatures were around freezing in the northern parts of our viewing area but high temperatures have climbed up into the mid to upper 40s Janesville has topped out at 50 as has Kenosha in fact those are the current temperatures here in Madison we're at 47 degrees now three degrees from the record high of 50 set back in 2000 2003. Visibility is right now starting to improve as the showers move to the north and east, but there still will be some areas of fog. Winds, though, uh, pretty strong, and that's uh, mixing up the air to keep the uh, fog from becoming too thick. 
By tomorrow morning, those temperatures will be back down to around 40 degrees. We'll see some areas of fog overnight along with a few showers. And then those showers will change to light snow by late tomorrow afternoon as temperatures drop to around freezing. That's your first alert forecast. Gary, thank you. A mother will be sentenced in April after her 15-year-old son died during a 40-day fast. Tita Lyo Omasebi pleaded guilty to felony child neglect in Sauk County Court today. The teen's father reported his death in September. Police say they found another child alive but very weak at the family's home in Reedsburg. The mother also alive but emaciated. She refused medical treatment for religious reasons. The boy's father, Kehinde Omosebi, described himself to police as a religious minister affiliated with Cornerstone Reformation Ministries. A Sauk County judge has ordered he undergo a competency examination. Another man faces charges in connection to a shooting at a Madison strip club. Madison police arrested 42-year-old Deshaun Robert from Milwaukee. Robert, along with Spencer Jackson and Cole Foster, faced charges in that shooting. Police say Robert has been receiving treatment for injuries he sustained in that shooting. According to a police report, detectives believe Jackson produced a gun during a fight at Visions, but that Foster fired a weapon inside the building. Three men and a woman had gunshot wounds. A fifth person was hurt by a knife, but did not require hospitalization. A Madison man facing charges for allegedly causing a scene at a Denny's. Police were called to the Denny's yesterday evening near Madison's East Town Mall. Employees say Robert Miracle was acting hostile toward customers and staff and ignored requests to stop. Officers say Miracle tried to get inside a squad car when they arrived, pulled away from an officer, placing him in custody, and then ran out into traffic on East Wash. Eventually, he was taken into custody without hurting himself or others. A Sun Prairie family asking for any help they can get after their home caught fire the day after Christmas. Jamie Perez spoke with the family today. Imagine it's the day after Christmas, presents still unwrapped around the tree, family just hanging out at home, and suddenly this happens. I just came out in the kitchen and I saw black smoke on the back of the house. Much of what Jonathan Williams and his family own on top of everything they just got for Christmas went up in flames. Just washing my hands at the kitchen sink and I saw it throwing some water on it, but I was unable to do anything. Unable to stop the fire, he got everyone out of the house. Big black plumes of smoke. The smoke filled the air as they waited for fire crews to arrive. It happened so fast. No insurance. No. No, one thing, one thing we didn't insure. And nothing but the clothes on their backs. You don't have somewhere to go to. You know, I've been, we were in that house for five years, so built a life there. This is Jonathan. Right now, they're staying at Jonathan's brother-in-law's home in Marshall. They not only lost their own home, but their family business as well. Both Jonathan and his wife ran a snow removal and a jewelry business from their home office. I don't even think I processed it yet. It's, I don't know how to describe it. While Jonathan and his family sort out what to do next for housing, he's got some more issues on his mind. One of his daughters has a list of medical problems. She got one of my kidneys in 2009. She's got diabetes from it, you know, she's got a bunch of issues. Um, so, I mean, we're working with the hospital right now to try and get everything replaced. While fire crews work on figuring out what caused the fire, this family is left figuring out how to rebuild a life and a home in the new year. In Dane County, Jamie Perez, WISC News 3. The family has a GoFundMe page set up. If you'd like to help, a link to their GoFundMe page can be found on our website, channel3000.com. It is a big day for Madison's newest and biggest fire station. Station 14 is now open. And with that, crews at the new fire station 14 are now responding to calls. The station, the result of years of planning and serves southeastern Madison and Blooming Grove. Fire officials call its opening a big deal for the Madison Fire Department in many ways. The previously lengthy response times of 10 to 15 minutes weren't meeting the city's standard. The station will allow crews to respond to emergencies in that area in five minutes or less. As the year comes to an end, we're spending some time looking at some of the big, biggest projects approved in Madison over the past 12 months. Madison Mayor Paul Sogman stopped by News 3 this morning, and while on the show, he talked about the city's public market. The market was initially moved into the city fleet service building on 1st Street. The proposed location changed since then, but as of this month, the current plan is to move it back to that fleet services building to keep costs down. We're really excited about the possibility of the market. There's all kinds of markets in the U.S. I've been to about 15 myself. Some are more oriented towards business people during the lunch hour, some towards tourists, some towards uh, fancy prepared foods. We're really focused on fresh, freshly grown, locally grown, locally prepared foods. And we think it'll be very exciting and a great compliment 
to the farmer's market. The mayor also talked about the Judge Doyle Square project. Well, on News 3, you can watch the entire interview at channel3000.com. A $50,000 Powerball ticket was sold in Sun Prairie this week. It was sold at the Quick Trip in Sun Prairie on West Main. Another winning ticket worth a million dollars was sold in Waukesha. A new study finds UW athletes are in better mental shape compared to their classmates. The University School of Medicine and Public Health surveyed about 800 athletes and 1,300 undergrads two years ago about their physical and mental health. Researchers say the mental health scores of athletes were higher, even compared to undergrads who were physically active and participated in club sports. They say Division I athletes typically have more resources available to them, like tutors, psychologists, and trainers. And speaking of those athletes, right now there's about nine minutes left in the third quarter. The Badgers in Miami in the Pinstripe Bowl at Yankee Stadium in New York City. Badgers lead 14-3, and we'll have another score update in just a few minutes, of course, during sports. It's a near record setter when it comes to rain this year in Madison, but it's our lack of snow that's taking a toll on some area businesses, how they're handling things at Cascade Mountain next at 6. Skiers and snowboarders are staying optimistic. Amy Reed joins us now live from Cascade Mountain to show us the conditions there and what they're hoping to see change. Amy? Yeah, Eric, the coverage is actually not bad here. We got about 18 to 36 inches, and once temps cool down, they'll be able to fire up the snowmaking equipment and maybe get a little bit more on here, but they don't want to risk it with these rainy conditions like we saw today. But that rain didn't drive away. The people here, they still came out today, even if there was no snowmaking. This is a little slower than normal for the week after Christmas, but the managers here are hoping to see that change, especially with colder temperatures and maybe even snow on the horizon, so that's keeping them optimistic. It's always kind of the same in Wisconsin. You never know quite what you're going to get. You just kind of got to roll with the punches and do the best that you can to uh, put out the best quality snow conditions for your customers. Because it's so early in the season, it's still hard to tell how this will impact them for the overall season. Same goes for the other businesses that we talked to today, which we can show you a little bit more of tonight at 10. But Eric, they're telling me the best snow comes in January and February, so there's still a lot to look forward to. Yeah, Amy's a Utah girl, so she knows how to handle those little ski hills <laughs> of Wisconsin. We look forward to hearing more tonight. Amy, thank you. She is live at Cascade Mountain. Will today's rain stick around? Through the night, Gary's got the details next in his first alert forecast.
Madison Street crews are holding two rounds of Christmas tree collection starting next week. Round one starts January 2nd. All trees should be on the curb by 7 a.m. that day and will likely be collected by January 8th. The second round starts January 22nd. It'll end February 8th. You'll need to remove all stands, decorations, any other objects from the tree for it to be collected. Trees placed on the curb after January 22nd may not be collected until regular brush collection starts up in the spring. All right, Gary Cadalti keeping a close eye on all this precipitation that we've gotten over the last uh, day or so, Gary, and it was really wet. It's been a whole year of this, right? Well, take a look at this uh, right now, and this is actually just, uh, we just uh, saw a new update. 50.03 inches of rain and melted snow for the calendar year so far. That makes it only the second year on record where Madison has had over 50 inches of rain. By contrast, we normally have about 35 inches. So we're actually about 15 and three quarters inches above average for the year. So it has been a very wet year. But as we take a look at Doppler track, just a little more rain in the forecast. Right now, the shower is becoming a little more widely scattered, so it's not a continuous rain, but there are some more showers to our south and to our west. Probably see a few more tonight, and then eventually that will change over to snow on the back edge of the storm system as the colder air sweeps in. It's been snowing pretty steadily through the Dakotas up into the northwestern half of Minnesota, far northwestern Wisconsin. Winter storm warnings in effect just north and west of the Twin Cities. Blizzard warnings in effect in the red areas across parts of the eastern Dakotas. Winter weather advisories in effect for parts of uh, far northwestern Wisconsin for lesser snow amounts as well as a little bit of light freezing rain. Live view from the Edgewater Sky Cam downtown Madison. It looks like the rain has stopped. We're not seeing uh, any haziness in the lights around the Capitol. Low this morning, 37 degrees. That's 10 degrees above our average high temperature of 27. And right now we're at 47. There's a record high of 50 set back in 2003. Temperatures may go up another degree or two before they start falling later on. Skies are cloudy. Winds are out of the south at 14 miles per hour. Humidity at 93%. Probably see some areas of fog out there as well. Although the brisk winds keeping the air mixed up and keeping the fog from becoming too thick. Temperatures are pretty much above freezing statewide, although close to freezing in far northwestern Wisconsin. Then on the back side of the storm, you can see how temperatures drop into the teens on the, uh, on the cold side, and that colder air will eventually start changing this rain over to snow as it pushes into Wisconsin. The main part of the storm over western Iowa right now, a big comma-shaped swath of precipitation with uh, showers and thunderstorms to the south and east, but the jet stream right now kind of making our precipitation a little more spotty. Eventually, as these two cold fronts sweep uh, northeastward across southern Wisconsin, the cold air starts to wrap around. By that time, the bulk of the heavier precipitation will be to our north and to our east, but we still may squeeze out an inch or so of snow from late tomorrow afternoon into tomorrow night. Temperatures, upper 40s here, teens across the Dakotas where wind chills are well below zero right now. And on future track, you can see how scattered rain showers tonight will change to light snow by late tomorrow afternoon into tomorrow evening. And then skies will clear out for the weekend with partly sunny skies, but a cold day on Saturday. And then on Sunday, those winds become southwesterly. Temperatures will be back up for the mid-30s for the last two days of the year. And then another shot of very cold air will arrive right in time for the new year. Our forecast for the overnight hours, mostly cloudy, breezy, very mild, some scattered showers, a few areas of fog. Low temperature will drop to 40, but to Tomorrow, we may only go up a degree or so before those temperatures start to drop again. We'll fall through the 30s and the showers will change to snow by late afternoon. On future track, scattered showers overnight. Tomorrow, you can see how the precipitation changes over to snow by late afternoon as temperatures drop into the 30s. Then tomorrow night, the precipitation comes to an end. We'll clear out for Saturday with high temperatures on Saturday, only in the middle 20s. If we do get any accumulating snow, it'll probably be an inch or less and this will be mainly late tomorrow afternoon into tomorrow night. Seven to 10 day forecast. As I mentioned, temperatures warm up briefly for the end of the year but almost right as the new year comes in, some flurries and then temperatures drop to around 21 on New Year's Day. Another brief warm up toward the end of next week, followed by colder weather for the weekend. While the Badgers play in the Pinstripe Bowl, it's a big week for high school holiday tournaments around here. We'll head to Madison Ice Arena for day one of the Culver's Cup in sports.
The Badgers in Miami are playing the Pinstripe Bowl at Yankee Stadium right now. Temperatures in the lower 40s with rain coming later tonight, but not expected to bother game. It's in the third quarter, and Wisconsin has just scored again. Alec Ingold with a short run. 21-3 Wisconsin. Jack Cohn has a 35-yard touchdown pass to Kendrick Pryor. Jonathan Taylor now up to 184 yards rushing in a score. The Badger defense has three interceptions and a fumble recovery, but Rafael Gaglianoni has missed two field goals, but... No big deal. By the way, the Badgers' next game after tonight, August 31st of next year, they'll open the 2019 season on the road at South Florida in Tampa next year. The first bowl game of the day is the Walk-On's Independence Bowl, sponsored by Walk-On's Bistro and Bars, 17 locations around Louisiana. Duke against Temple. Duke quarterback Daniel Jones throws five touchdown passes. Receiver T.J. Roming has 12 catches, 240 yards, and two scores. Final score, Duke 56, Temple 27 in the Walk-On's Independence Bowl. The Packers and Lions play out the string Sunday at noon at Lambeau Field, and when the Packers' season ends Sunday just after 3 o'clock, that's that. No playoffs. Interim head coach Joe Philbin is a realist on how the NFL is a business, and the end of the season comes very quickly. And uh, the reality is uh, some of these guys may never see each other the rest of their uh, natural lives on earth, right? Because things change in the National Football League regardless of the win-loss record you have that particular year. So this is an opportunity for us to put together you know, one final um, game. You know, By Monday at 5 o'clock, right, this is going to be a ghost town. It was good to see former Whitewater star Jay Kumaro get his first NFL regular season touchdown reception against the Jets last Sunday. Kumaro has five catches, 84 yards this season, has an eye on the future, hoping to stay in Green Bay again next year and perhaps years to come. Yeah, I was just happy to contribute, happy to help the team. Uh, you know, any, anything I can do, uh, when they throw it my way, I just try and catch it. That's, that's what I've been doing since I got here, so I'll try and keep doing that. These last three weeks are, uh, are a big step for uh, us individually and us as a team. You know, it's going to put uh, basically what we're going to be ready for next year. You know, whatever we finish off with, that's what's going to be the taste left in our mouth, so we're going we're gonna to come ready. The Prep Mania Game of the Week returns a week from tomorrow. We'll have boys basketball, Madison LaFollette at Madison East, live on Channel3000.com, January 4th at 7.15 p.m. There's a great high school hockey tournament at Hartmeyer and MIA this week, the 10th annual Culver's Cup. Those are the Culver's Cups. The Metro Lynx girls team a little shorthanded because of family vacations and a JV tournament, so they only had 11 in uniform today against Northland Pines of Eagle River, but no problem for the Lynx. There's Abby Alborn for the rebound goal. She had two goals and an assist. And Sierra Berg had a hat trick. Metro Lynx 8, Northland Pines 1. Okay, we saw this sign on one of the back exits at Madison Ice Arena. Looks pretty simple, right? Don't shoot hockey pucks at the door, right? Right? Just wait. You gotta put them on all the doors. They shot about 500 hockey pucks at the doors. Well, anyway, the kids, one last time, don't shoot hockey pucks at the doors at the rear entrance at Madison Ice Arena. The one door did look wider than the other two oh, with the little sign on it. They're still so maybe they hit. listened a little bit. They're still getting hit. Yeah. It's all fun and games until somebody comes in the door and gets a, yeah, yeah, you eats a hockey puck. Yeah. All right, final check, Gary. Yeah, we got some uh, rain out there. It's all rain around here. The snow is well up to the north of us. Uh, often on showers tonight, maybe some areas of fog. Look at the temperatures. 47 right now, Madison. Only 3 degrees from the record high of 50. And the next seven days, uh, rain changes to snow tomorrow. Cold on Saturday. Warm up for Sunday. And last day of the year then some light snow moves in monday night and just in time for the new year temperatures drop off again and up and down temperatures for the rest of the week all right we'll have more updates on the bowl game tonight at 10 thanks for joining us for new street six download the new channel 3000 app and get alerted on your mobile device the minute news breaks wherever you go be the first to know with channel 3000